Now, the city of Ontario still has one of the mule cars downtown at Euclid and B Street, and I'm told that it's enclosed in glass because it still works as a time travel machine. And they don't give just anybody a key to this thing. But I'm told that on the 4th of July, if you put one hand behind the stone and tap the center plaque three times, the horse will come to life and the door will open. Hear that? I think it worked. Let's go find out. Wow, we made it. You know, I was, I was told that if you get the mule and the mule car to go backward really fast, you could go back in time. And good things happen when you go up a hill backward. So you ready, number nine? Okay, here goes. It worked. It's 1776. Let's go see what's going on on Euclid Avenue. Uh, uh, hi, excuse me. I'm Tim Greenwood from the 4th of July television broadcast in Ontario. You, uh, what's your name, sir? I am John Hancock. John Hancock. Yes, yeah, so wonderful. Let me give you my card. Oh, look at that. John Hancock, President of the Continental Congress. Uh, what in the world would the head of the Continental Congress be doing out here where uh, one day there will be an Ontario, California? Well, I'm here in Ontario as I'm preparing to go to Philadelphia for the signing of the Declaration of Independence where the 13 colonies will announce our independence from England. We are going to sign the declaration and we're going to courier it on to England to announce that it is all over between us. And in fact, just like a high school romance, you know, uh, it's uh, going to take some time, but eventually they're going to get the message that we are, it is all over between us. And so this is uh, breaking up using the world's longest and first text message. <laughs> exactly. It's like the world's biggest text message. And in fact, I'm going to sign the Declaration of Independence with my name printed exactly like this, larger than anyone else's, so that fat old King George can read it without his spectacles. That, that, that would be successful. He might be able to read it from here. It's, it's <laughs> very, very good. Now, you're out here where one day the Chafee brothers will be making this whole area into Ontario, California. Um, are you enjoying yourself? I do look forward to trying your sun-kissed tea here. Oh, the sun-kissed oranges are wonderful, but unfortunately the sun-kissed factory won't be opening in Ontario until 1931. Ah. So you're a bit ahead of your time, sir. Yeah, that's true. I have been told that many, many times before, that I am ahead of my time. <laughs> Indeed. Now, since you do know so very much, Mr. Hancock, uh, yes. might you tell me where I would find Betsy Ross, who is making the flag for the new country? Uh, well, you know, we asked one of the generals in our army, George Washington, to become the new king of our new country. But he declined unless the position was going to be the president. So he's the man who would not be king. Ah, exactly. That's ah, okay. very, very good. <laughs> so instead, uh, he took over the control of the army and he hired Betsy Ross to sew our first national flag. And if I am not mistaken, uh, I believe she can be found in this direction. Oh, very good. Well, then I will certainly try that. Mr. Hancock, it's been a pleasure meeting oh, you today. Oh, it's been very nice meeting you. Good day to you, sir. Thank you. Oh, this must be Betsy Ross's house. I'll bet they'll try to fix that one day. Oh. Well, hello, Miss Ross. I'm Tim Greenwood from OntarioParade.com. Parade? Yes. Ontario? Yes. Yeah, well, they, they said that you would be the person to talk to about sewing the new flag for the country. Oh, won't you come in? Come on. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 
all done. Miss Ross, you have an amazing collection of flags around here, and they're from all the colonies, and they show so much history. Oh yes, I know. I know the person who made everyone. Oh, you're all friends? Well, yes, we keep track of each other. Oh, through wax-sealed messages hand-carried by couriers? Oh, no, we stay connected with this. There's Louisa Marvin. And there's Camille Smithson. And there, of course, is my page. And I like sewing, forming countries, and the red, white, and blue. Oh, uh, Miss Ross, I understand you're sewing a new flag for a country yet to be called the United States of America. Yes, and it is such a pleasure. But I wanted to be head of the treasury. Head of the treasury. Yes, I'm a very aware of every stitch that it takes to make something worthwhile. And I know that if you plan ahead, you'll have everything you need so that you don't have to make a panic trip down to the general convenience store. But you said you wanted to be head of the treasury, Ms. Ross. How did you end up sewing the flag? I was telling Ben Franklin that a stitch in time saves nine. Well, he mistook that for sewing instead of my obvious knowledge of money management. Well, then he was talking to George, oh, I mean the man who would not be king, and he asked me to sew the first flag. Oh, that is after I won the contest. So you won a contest, that's what got his attention. Oh, yes, I won Best Seamstress Award in the soon-to-be America's Got Talent. <laughs> The flag you're working on certainly does look glorious, Miss Ross, but what's going to happen when we add colonies and it gets old? Oh, I suppose that might happen. And, and, and I, guess, I guess I could say we meant it to be that way. And as we add more colonies and we have to replace the flag, let's see, what can we do? Well, you know we can start calling it Old Glory right now. <laughs> I like that. That's great. Oh. Look at that calendar. Um, Miss Ross, I'm going to have to be going back where we were, but thank you so much for talking with us about sewing the flag for the United States of America. Well, it, it's been a real pleasure, Tim. Thank you. Yeah. A penny saved is a... A penny saved is a... It's a tenth of an ounce of copper. It is. Why, well, I can keep that going until about 1982. <laughs> Oh, look, there's Ben, there's Ben Franklin. Hello, Ben Franklin. Well, hello. It is so nice to see you. Welcome to what will be Ontario, California one day. Well, thank you, Tim. Gosh, now I hear you have wonderful plans for what will be the United States of America. Why, well, yes, yes, I do. I think we need a, a proud and noble symbol something to keep us on track with becoming a proud and noble country. What I think we need, Tim, is a national bird. And I propose the wild turkey. Why, well, it's a proud, upstanding bird, noble and, <clears throat> and wonderful. And it doesn't steal food from other birds. I see, yeah. Oh, yes, yes, I will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I, I guess we better get back too and get back in time for the parade, so let's go. Oh, Tim, did you take some liberties with this story? Uh, well. I've seen it all. And I'm known for being stubborn when I feel I'm right, you know. Uh, right, yeah, I understand. Well, let's check your notes. All right. The reason for the Independence Day celebration is the anniversary of the first signatures on the Declaration of Independence, right? Check. Ben Franklin wanted the wild turkey instead of the bald eagle as the national bird. Check. Other facts in the story? Uh, other facts a little checkered. But, you know, they can always check with their teacher or uh, visit the Ontario Public Library. And Old Glory? And Old Glory is the name of the flag of the United States of America. That's its nickname. 
Okay, engine number nine, you ready to go back? Let's go. We're back. Wow. And, and, and that's it. That, that's how the 4th of July started, was the signing of the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> and we got to meet those people. That's cool. Um, uh, I, I think we should get out of here now. Wow. Uh, that was fun. I tell you what, as our Los Angeles Regional Independence Day broadcast continues, let's go up to the Hollywood sign and check in with Brittany Fetkin. Brittany? <laughs> 